Hey everybody, today we're talking about packages and using the app packages to distribute software using any MDM or simply creating installers that you can let people download and install on their Macs on their own. So today we're going to talk about two different types of software deployment strategies. Deploying a self-contained app and then deploying a package using the app packages. So the first thing you need to do is go out and download the packages app. Now, luckily I've already downloaded the packages app and I'm gonna go ahead and open it up and I'll put a link to where you can download the packages app. It's an app created by Whitebox. It's an amazing app and it gives you the ability to create two different styles of packages, a distribution style package and a raw package. Now, a raw package is also sometimes considered a flat package. So I'm going to go ahead and choose raw package. And 99% of the time, I use this type of package. A distribution style package or a bundle type of a approach is a package that's where you can distribute multiple packages at once. And in, in this case, I'm simply looking to deploy an app. In this tutorial video, we're going to talk about how to deploy Chrome using packages and the two approaches that you can take when doing so. All right, full disclosure, this walkthrough is going to be using a couple of guides that I found online from a well-known and great author and speaker, Rich Troughton, who has a blog called Dirt Founder. It's amazing. I've been learning a lot from him over the years, and he's a great contributor to the Mac Admins community. If you haven't signed up for the Mac Admin Slack, please do so now. I'll put a link in the comments below. And if you have never heard of Rich and his wonderful blog, Dirt Flounder, it's amazing. I'll put a link to, to that below as well. So let's take a break from packages. We're going to come back to this in a minute. But I'm going to go ahead and open up my browser here. And what I want to do is I need to download the installer for Chrome. All right, so I'm going to be deploying it two different ways. I'm going to show you how to deploy a standalone app, and I'm going to show you how to deploy a package. So we're just going to go ahead and go to the download page. Now, when you click on this link, it's going to take you right over to the download page. And when you do, I'm going to go ahead and re-click on that link. I've already downloaded the package. You're going to choose Mac, Stable, and then PKG Universal Installer. And then you're going to download that package. Okay. All right. So let's take a look at the Dirt Flounder website. Now, Rich has written a wonderful tutorial. This was back in 2013. It's still applicable today called Repackaging Installer Packages with packages. That's the app that we just downloaded. The more recent and more updated version of this article was a presentation that Rich did at JNUC this year in September of 2023, where he actually went into great detail about how to repackage and fix packages and distribute those packages using a number of tools, packages being one of them, script to package, which we'll do another video on, Shortly was another. Highly recommend visiting this blog post. Highly recommend visiting this blog post. We will put these blog posts in the descriptions below. We're going to use elements of these posts in the walkthrough today. The blog post goes over how to deploy Microsoft Office updates. So if you're interested in doing that, highly recommend this. For the purposes of this video, though, we're talking about different strategies for deploying Chrome. All right, so let's go back to our packages app. We're going to choose raw package. I'm going to call this Chrome and I'm going to change the, I'm going to add a hyphen. I'm going to put flat package or actually I'm going to change this to self contained app distribution just so that I know because I'm going to create another one here shortly that shows you how to script the deployment of the PKG file that we downloaded earlier. So I'm going to go ahead and press create. It's going to open up a window and it's going to have the name that we picked right at the beginning. I leave these settings as default. 
And then when we move over to settings, I'm gonna change the where it says my great company to my actual company name, just so that the receipt file that's left on the computer is unique. And if anyone else has ever used packages, you, you wanna make sure that you have a unique identifier here. This version is version one, version is important. If you're recreating uh, a package and you come back to the packages file and you're distributing a new package, you'll want to increase the version number here um, just so that it knows that it's installing a new version. And then under payload, we're going to add the Chrome application to the applications folder. So if you already have Chrome installed, we can go ahead and distribute it by finding the Chrome app, Google Chrome, and then adding that to the applications folder. So in this way, what we're doing is we're taking the file that is in the applications folder, it's a self-contained app, and we're deploying it using packages. It's going to put this Chrome, Google Chrome dot app file in the applications folder of anyone who installs this final package. So I'm going to go ahead and choose Bill. And we're going to see that build successfully. And I'll show you where the packages file or the package file ultimately goes. We can see here that it's building the package. And we're just going to wait for that to build. All right, build was successful. So now we can go ahead and locate this build file. So if we go into our users folder or the root level of the users folder, you can see here that we have created a Google Chrome self-contained disk. This is the packages file that we can reopen to edit and create new distributions if we want to. And then the build folder is where we have the PKG. Now this PKG file can be distributed as is, but it is not signed, which means that if we have a package that is not signed and or notarized, when we go to deploy it via an MDM or if someone tries to install it, they're going to get that gatekeeper warning. Hey, this app or this package is from an untrusted source. So we always want to sign our packages. Now, in order to sign the package, you do need to be a member of the Apple Developer Network and you need to have Xcode installed. Now, I'm just gonna go ahead and demonstrate the process by which I installed my certificates using my Apple Developer account. You would open Xcode, you would go to settings and you would add your account. Once you have your account added and I clicked on the plus button and chose Apple ID. Once you do that, you will see the account has been added and you can manage your certificates. If you don't have a certificate, you can add the certificate that you need by clicking on this plus button and it will generate the key pair that you need. And these keys will automatically show up in Keychain Access and they will be usable by any application that can code sign or sign various elements within a distribution workflow. All right, so wonderful thing about packages is that it has the ability to sign items. All right, so to sign a certificate, you would click on project and then you would go to project set certificate. Now it's going to find the developer installer certificate that I already have installed. I'm going to choose that. We'll see that we now have the certificate badge up in the corner of the window. This tells me that when I build this again, I'm gonna go ahead and save it first. It's going to build and it's going to sign my package. And that signed component is what's going to establish trust with Apple and Apple computers that have Gatekeeper enabled, which is most computers today. So highly recommend signing your packages. And this is a great way of doing so via the packages interface. All right, so it's asking me to type in my password here. And I'm gonna hit always allow. And now it has digitally signed my package. So if I go back into the packages location, 
Again, that is in my root or the root of my home folder in the build folder. If I open up this package now, it opens up without any warnings and it gives me the ability to install. Okay, so that's how you know that it's been signed. All right, so some may argue that Chrome is not a drag and drop application. So installing it in this way may be a bad idea. So this would really be great for a self-contained app, maybe an app like App Cleaner, which comes down as an actual .app file. Whereas Google Chrome, we want to deploy that using the PKG file that we downloaded earlier because Chrome will install other components with the app itself. So it's probably going to install some preferences and other items and other folders and, and locations that we might not be aware of. And because of that, we want to try to use the PKG file that comes from the company. Now, most of the time, and 99% of the time, it's true, the packages that you download from manufacturers are already signed. So when you create a package to distribute another package, you're going to want to make sure that package is signed. If it's not signed, you want to kick it back to the manufacturer and ask them for a signed package. When you distribute a package, not only do the resources, the packages that you put inside your package need to be signed, but your package can't be signed unless every package inside of it is signed, meaning you can't notarize that package because the notarization looks for valid signature on every package within the package as you go through the notarization phase. And we'll have a whole nother video about notarization and GUI applications that can help manage notarization for, for this video. We're just talking about creating packages, the kinds of packages and signing those packages. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new project. And again, I'm gonna choose raw package. I'm gonna choose Google Chrome. I'm gonna call it Google Chrome and I'm gonna call this PKG, which is the deployment of the PKG. Now, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to change my great company to the name of my actual company or organization. I am going to skip the payload, set, payload section because I'm not going to be distributing a file that goes into a location. We're going to be distributing a package that I've already downloaded, which is here in the downloads folder, the Google Chrome.pkg. And we're going to write a script that actually allows us to install this resource. Now I got this script from the Dirt Flounder website and I'll put a link in the description below. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the script. When I work with scripts, I like to use text edit. And if you do use text edit, make sure that you are using text edit with plain text. We wanna make sure we're not writing our scripts in rich text, right? We want just plain old text. So this script, let me walk you through it, is a bash script. And basically what it has is a few variables to detect the OS version and the install directory. And what we're doing here is we're installing, I'm gonna change this from Office 2011. We're gonna change this to Chrome using specified installer packages in the working directory, which is here in the additional resources area of the packages. And what we're saying is we're saying install this verbosely in the installation directory. And this is the name of the package. And we're targeting dollar sign three, which in this case is the root hard drive. So this is the universal variable for the root hard drive. We simply call this postscript. And I am going to make sure that I add this to the post installation section of this, of this script area. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and save. I'm gonna click on project. I'm gonna set the certificate because I wanna make sure that it's signed. And now I am going to build. And what this is going to do, oh, here we go, unable to copy the file and that happens when we haven't we did not give this application access to all of the locations within the drive 
So we want to make sure that we do that. We're going to go to accessibility. We're going to go to full disk access. Oops, sorry, privacy and security rather. Full disk access. And we're going to give the packages app access to our hard drive so that it can actually copy. Should have done this first, but I totally forgot. We could hit later there. It's totally fine. Packages toggle is on. So now if we go to build, it's going to try this again. Say and build. Okay, you don't have the permission. Okay, so I figured out what we need to do. Not only do we need to give the app itself privileges, we also need to give the binaries that work within this package or within this application the permission to do so on our behalf. So packages dispatcher also needs to be toggled on. And now when we package this up, let's go ahead and take a look. Build. It should successfully build this packet. Looks a lot better. Okay, very. So now let's go ahead and take a look at our package. And we can see here that we have a signed package that is going to distribute an installer that has the Chrome package installer in it. And upon successful execution of the application, it's going to install Chrome. I don't have Chrome running right now so that I can show you what the installer looks like. I'm going to go ahead and go through the process. Let's just take a look at the Chrome version that we have now. Let's take a look at Chrome, Chrome version, about Chrome. I'm on version 11805993. I'm going to go ahead and quit Chrome so that it doesn't automatically update. I'm going to install the version of Chrome that I just in that I just packaged. It's asking me for my password. Let me go ahead and do that. It's writing the files. It's running the package script. Now this script is running the chrome.pkg file that we put inside of the installer. And when we reload Chrome, we should see that it's running the latest and greatest version because we are repackaging it up very nicely here using the packages app. So we want to go ahead and give installer permissions to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and say yes, okay. And the installation was successful. Wonderful. So now let's open up Chrome. Let's see what version we're at. And you can see here that we are on the latest version. Dot 80. And we got the green, the check mark right away. All right, I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. Hope you found it informative. Again, I'm going to put the links that for all the things that we talked about in the video today in the description. Thanks for watching. Hey, everybody. So if you love this video and you want to see more great content like it, please check out my LinkedIn page. Connect with me. Follow me over there. Also, please hit that bell button and subscribe to our YouTube channel and leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching.